Thank you so much for joining me for chemistry demo time. All right, so the idea is, is that you already have um, understanding of the difference between a chemical change and a physical change. But if you think about those definitions, physical change looks different but keeps the identity. Chemical change looks different because it's a new identity. It's kind of tricky thinking about, well, how do we actually know it's a new identity? How do we know that there's new bonds forming, that there's actually a new like chemical composition? That's kind of difficult to tell because sometimes it might not look a lot different. So the great news is, is that chemistry gives us some signs. So what I'm going to show you is what are the five signs that if you are observing some type of change, you know that if you see one or more of these things, you will know that it's a chemical change, not just a physical change. All right. So the first thing I'm going to show you is I got some, I have two chemicals here. This one happens to be called ammonium nitrate. It looks kind of like white beads or kind of like, you know, when um, styrofoam falls apart, like those little white beads, that's called ammonium nitrate. And then I'm going to just put it in a baggie. And then the other one I have is calcium chloride, which kind of looks like white chalky sort of pieces, like crunched up kind of like hard pieces like that. So calcium chloride. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some water to them. So right now, I'm going to give you a hint about what we're going to notice. Right now, we have, um, I'm using a digital th thermometer. So you can see that, oh, it, it looks like it's about 23.1, about room temperature. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oops, I'm going to put some water in each of these baggies. And then we're going to see if we notice anything change. Okay, so you can see that one. I got some water in it. it looks a little bit cloudy. And then let me do the same thing. Um, some water in it. This is called deionized water, meaning that the only pieces floating around in it are water pieces. No other, like, you know, hard water, soft water kinds of stuff. Like, no other minerals. Okay. So remember that original temperature. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in here. So you see what they look like now. You know, just basically what you would expect. So right now you might think this looks like a physical change. But what I want to show you is I'm going to go ahead and put the thermometer in here. And let's see what we notice. Can you see it? There we go. All right, so look at that. So in definitely an increased temperature, 42.1, 42.2, 43.3 a little bit. So definitely we see, there we go. Let me get a little bit more in there. So remember, it started at 23, and look at that change of temperature. Not something you would have noticed just by looking. If you were here, you could feel it. It definitely feels warm. So a temperature change that happens on its own is a sign of a chemical change. All right, well, I've got this other baggie. Let's check out this. I did just clean this off in between, so let this get back. All right, it's cooling down, it's cooling down. I'm not gonna wait for it. I'm just gonna put it in here and see what we notice now. Look at that. So we are down to four degrees, three something. It just keeps getting lower and lower and lower. So remember, it started at 23, and then we got it up to, you know, high 40s with that other baggie. And now you can see we're down to less than one degree Celsius we're using to measure in chemistry. So we end up with this really cold temperature change, even to the point of negative. Now, it's not frozen because it's not just water. Water freezes at zero degrees Celsius, but it's even colder than that, showing you that these particles are doing something to change the amount of energy within their structure. And again, you would feel that this is pretty cool, like quite cold, actually, based on that room temperature. So we see a temperature change. We observed it using a thermometer, and then also we can feel the container. Notice I didn't stick my hands inside the container, but if this was in a beaker, in a lab, you would be able to take the temperature or observe it by feeling the container. So when chemicals are mixed, so there's some type of reaction that you have started, and those particles change temperature on their own, that is a sign that you are creating some type of new identity. So a temperature change, either hotter or colder, when you didn't add it, you didn't heat it up, you didn't put it on a Bunsen burner in a microwave or a hot plate, but it happens on its own, that's a sign of a chemical change. All right, let's do the next one. Let me just kind of set some of these things aside here. Okay. 
This next one I'm going to do, so what I have here is I have some a piece of cotton. Um, basically, it's kind of the cotton you would use like if you were gonna um, make a stuffed animal or get it from a craft store, so just regular cotton there. And then what I have is something called sodium peroxide. Sodium peroxide, you kind of see here, it looks kind of like little yellow beads a little bit. And I'm just gonna make a little, little bed of some of that sodium peroxide and the cotton, and that's it. Okay, technically there's a little bit more. I'm also gonna put a few drops of that same water I used in the last demo. Now if you were close by, you might hear some sizzling happening. That's interesting. So there's like some sizzing and some fizzing happening, but then let's see if we notice anything else going on. Can you hear that sizzling? All right, definitely there's something happening here. So the fact that we were able to produce fire by adding little drops of water tells you for sure this is a chemical change. Let's think about all the things that happen. For sure a temperature change, like we just learned, if the temperature happens, change happens on its own, we know that's gonna be a chemical change. Fire implies that there would be a temperature change. But the other really cool thing you saw was light. So light being produced on its own from the chemical reaction is a sign that it's a chemical change. So this new stuff that I have here, it doesn't look like the stuff that I started with. So that is a sign that this is a chemical change. Not just a physical change, yeah, it looks different, but it looks different because it's a new identity. How do we know it's a new identity? Temperature change, light given off. And then there was that fizzing. We'll come back to that in a little bit. So definitely a sign that something new has been created. So we've got two signs of a reaction now. So if you're doing an experiment and you see a temperature change or, and or you see light given off, this is a sign that this is a chemical change. All right, the next one I want to do um, involves a couple different liquid chemicals or solutions actually. This solution happens to be called potassium iodide. You can see that it really just kind of looks like water. It happens to be potassium iodide mixed with water. That's what makes it a homogeneous mixture, a solution. And then my other chemical I'm going to use is lead nitrate. Once again, kind of looks like water. So I'm using two chemicals that are called aqueous solutions, meaning the chemical is mixed with water to create a solution. And you can see they both kind of look similar. Now, if I were to ask a kindergartner, if I take something that looks like water and mix it with something with water, they might be like, oh, nothing interesting is gonna happen. Or because they're in kindergarten, they might make up some wild story. Well, it turns out they might be right. Okay, so I, turn, I pour in my one of my solutions and I take a look at my other solution, mix them together, ta-da, chemistry happens, yay. Okay, so let's think about what happened. For sure, there is a color change. That's the thing that you notice right away. But I also want you to notice, as I bring it a little bit closer, do you notice that there's kind of like some chalky collection at the bottom? That is a precipitate. The definition of a precipitate is a solid that forms from a chemical change between two solutions. So it's not any time you produce a solid, right? So if you boil off water and there's like a crusty solid left behind because there was something mixed in the water, that's not a precipitate. A precipitate is, a, is the result of a chemical change between two solutions. We know it's a chemical change because if you looked at the way that those two solutions looked when they started, they looked clear, right? They looked like water. You couldn't see any particles in them. Now you can see these particles that have settled to the bottom that is the precipitate. So this demo actually produced two signs of a reaction, a definite color change that was unexpected. So for example, a color change that's not expected is if I take a black marker and I color on a white piece of paper, it turns black or any other color or paint or food dye or any of that. Those are expected color changes. You haven't changed the identity, you have just changed the look of it. So that's physical change. But a color change, especially in addition with my precipitate, definitely an identity change. The starting chemicals looked different, the ending chemicals look different because it's a new identity. So we've got temperature change, light given off, color change that's unexpected with something else, and then this happened to be precipitate. All right, so we've got four of our five signs of a reaction. Let's go back, or let's finish it up with our last one. So what I have here is just a big metal tray, but then inside it, I've got 
It's hydrogen peroxide. Now remember that other demo with the cotton used sodium peroxide looks very different. Hydrogen peroxide you might even have at your home. Um, maybe you've used it for cleaning out cuts because the chemicals of hydrogen peroxide can kill cells. Now the tricky thing, the reason it hurts when you put it on your skin, is that hydrogen peroxide doesn't know the difference between bacteria, germ cells, and regular healthy cells. So that's why you don't just use it to like wash your hands um, because it would kill any cells it comes into contact with. You would just want to put it on you know, a cut or a scrape or something to kill any bacteria. So that's, the, that's what this chemical is hydrogen peroxide. So I'm going to put some hydrogen peroxide in the bottom of this graduated cylinder and you can see that okay sure there's some little fizzy bubbles that form just because I poured it kind of fast but other than that I don't really see anything happening. So the tricky thing here is that this is a reaction that is actually happening. Hydrogen and oxygen are pulling apart from each other, from the hydrogen peroxide. Now, you might be like, well, yeah, right, Ms. K, I don't see anything happening, right? So there's no signs of a reaction to prove that something is happening. Well, you might know, well, wait, hydrogen and oxygen, they're both gases. So maybe the reason we don't see it is because they're just floating away and we can't tell. So why don't I add some soap? If I add some soap, maybe that will trap some of those gases and then maybe bubbles will appear and then those bubbles will be the sign of my reaction. Okay, so let me mix that together. Okay, so definitely you see a little bit of bubbles, but now as I let it sit there, does it look like it's changing at all? Not really anymore, right? So either this is a dud of a demo, which I hope you trust that I'm not gonna choose a dud of a demo for you, or there's something else going on. So the tricky thing about this demo is that it happens really slowly, and sometimes that's the case. Reactions take longer to happen depending on what is going on in that reaction. So I'm going to use something called a catalyst. Now maybe you remember from biology that an enzyme is a catalyst that happens in a living cell to speed up reactions. Sometimes it's, you know, we use it to get nutrients from foods. A catalyst is just something that speeds up a reaction. So I told you this reaction is happening, but it's happening really slow. Let's speed it up and see if we can get our fifth sign of a reaction. Let's see what it is. So I pour in my catalyst, and then what do we notice? Ta-da! Okay, so definitely something is happening now. Check that out. So now for sure there's bubbles, and then look at this. This tells us what? Temperature change, you're right. But the bubbles tell us that what is happening? Gas is given off. If you were here, you could smell it also. Now think back to that demo with the cotton. I told you that we could hear fizzing. That was also a sign that gas was being given off. So fizzing, bubbles, smell. If you can smell something that wasn't there before, that's a sign that a new identity has been given or uh, produced and it has a certain scent. So this one, you can see temperature change. You can see um, gas given off. Um, and then there's also a little bit of a color change. You might be able to see kind of this yellowish color. So definitely signs of a reaction. So the stuff that's here is not the same identity as we started with. Um, it looks like it would be fun to touch. The tricky thing though is that hydrogen peroxide might not all be used up. So these bubbles could actually be really painful the way that hydrogen peroxide is. So even though it looks really fun and like you wanna touch it, it's not safe to touch it. Okay, so let's review really quickly. What were the five signs of a reaction? So if you're doing a lab and you're observing what's going on, these are the things you're looking for to see if there was a chemical change or chemical reaction. Did the temperature change on its own? So then you have to make sure you measure and observe before and after. Did the color change on its own? Is there a precipitate produced? Is there light given off? Is there gas given off? Those are the things we look for to decide whether or not something is a chemical change. Thanks for joining me for Chemistry Demo Time. Bye.